Okay, well we've got I've got to do another video on natural law, and this is going to I'm hoping this will follow on shortly with some some discussion on um, dealing with property taxes. But at the minute, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay some sort of like a foundational idea um, to do with language. Okay, okay. Who the, the fundamental question we've got to ask is who gets to decide what a language means because we've all come i mean we've when we're dealing with the fictional system when we're dealing with the legal system it has its own language that's the trick that's how it cons everybody is by using a deceptive language a language that's not uh, known by man to the general public let's put it that way it's not known so <clears throat> Who gets to decide, though, um, what a language means? So the first thing is, the first thing we've got to establish is that, well, we know this, is that a fiction, a pure fictional entity, doesn't have any jurisdiction in the material world. That it has zero jurisdiction. The only jurisdiction it gets is within the head of whoever created it and then in the head of whoever else wants to believe in it okay i know this is already i'm starting down the slippery slope of <laughs> being able to understand what i'm going on about but the the fiction has no jurisdiction in the material world it doesn't it only it can only project into the material world through a man let's put it that way so who gets to decide what language means? You know, who gets to decide what is on that document or on that driving license, what that language means? Who gets to decide that? Well, the guy that authored it gets to decide because it's his document. He gets to decide what the language is on there. Only he knows. Only the man that wrote that thing knows what that language means. Okay, now we're running into a problem though. And then the problem is, when I give some language to another man, if I don't tell him what it means, who gets to decide what it means? Who gets to decide what it means? If, if I don't tell another man what my, my language means, who gets to decide? The man receiving it gets to decide why does he get why does he get to decide because there is a common language that is common to everybody in the world it changes by region so for example in America most of the people speak some kind of form of English <laughs> Now it's not strictly true because there's a lot of Spanish people here that speak, you know, some kind of Spanish derived language. So I say Spanish people, Hispanic people, okay, um, people that have that ethnicity. I don't, I don't, I don't really know the best way to to say that, but they don't speak English, all right. So these, so we've got people here that don't necessarily speak the same language. We've got people here. Where if you went up north, or somebody from north went down south, there's a good chance you might not quite understand what they're speaking. You know, especially when they start mixing some French and other bits and bobs in there. But, the man of that area, the local man within that area, they will know what each other is speaking. You know? And this is where, if we go outside of our area... We need to, we at least need to meet the other man halfway in the middle. You know, we need to explain, you know, if w the only way you can have an agreement as, as in the legal system, a meeting of the minds to have some kind of formal agreement. The only way you can have an agreement with language is by both parties meeting in the middle. I can't hand something over to somebody with no definitions on it. And expect him to know what it means if it means something other than what is locally understood 
Who gets to decide what language means in the local area? Who, who has dominion over the earth? Man. The local man has dominion over the local area. This is just a natural law fact. If local man has dominion over that area, he has he has the authority the authority he has the authority to define what language means. And when I say he has, I'm talking collectively. So this is how it works. You know, let's use the example of person. I walk down the road and I ask a hundred people what person means. I bet you probably a hundred times out of a hundred somebody the answer will be a person is a man woman or child that's what that's what the answer will be okay we could say 99 times out of a hundred um, that's the answer you're gonna get you might get one person out of a hundred that will know that a person comes that 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 word comes from a root that means a persona okay a false identity if you like so you won't there will be people out there that know this but for the bulk of the local man that again speaks local common descriptive language that means he interprets all kinds of different symbols in terms of language so that man he is he has dominion over the common the local common land he therefore has dominion over anything that's physical in that area what is language okay it's fictional up here but once it's spoken it becomes physical it becomes a, a physical vibration for a short period of time a few seconds whatever or it becomes a written language it becomes physical it's manifest in symbols on a piece of paper who has the authority to um, derive meaning from that? Who can, who's the only person that can, uh, the only person, the only man that can just that can get meaning from that is the local common man, and it's his language, his interpretation of the language that is correct in that situation. So, if a fictional entity comes to me and gives me something that says person on it. Or says property on it if it's in the common and there is no other um, there's no other definition with it or how to get a definition from that document how, how do I interpret I interpret as nature intended as a natural man I interpret with um, descriptive English dialect that is that is common to my local fellow man you know and it, you know depending on where you live it might be 20 miles down the road before the dialect you know before things start changing it might be a hundred miles it might be a thousand miles down the road before the language changes enough that you need to start working in some um some kind of definitions with it i can go halfway across the world and understand somebody and then you know i could go down south here and probably not understand somebody and the same with people here you know if they listen to somebody in scotland half the time you, <laughs> you have a hard time understanding them whereas people that have been exposed to that language say you know through tv or whatever or friends that might have that kind of an accent they're more accustomed to the the different phrases and the different different uses so it's just a matter of speaking to somebody and so in order to get to a meeting uh you've ha got to have both parties inputting you can't just have one party said oh here sign this contract don't give any meaning behind it and then they know full well that the man will interpret that in common language that's the only way it can be interpreted so this is where all fictions break the law now they want to try and get around it by saying well there's a signature on there there's a man that authored that um, document and he has the meaning all you have to do is go and ask that man what the meaning is but the problem is 
because half the time you don't even meet the man, you don't know if that signature is a real man or not. Again, you don't know if you're dealing with a, a person in terms of the legal person, the legal fictional person, or a real man. Most of the time, if there's a real man putting his signature on there, and it's a fictional document produced by the legal system, he shouldn't be claiming that he is authoring that or any any kind of signature on there to do with the real man. He shouldn't be, because you can bet your bottom dollar. Um, well, I mean, right, right there, there's a violation of natural law, because this guy, he's it's it's his it's his okay. He's saying it's his language. That's fine, but you can't. Put something into the common. I can't make up a fictional language. Put it into the common. I should know full well what the common man speaks. Because I am a common man myself. So I've got no excuse. There's no excuse for putting a, a fictional language into the common. Giving it to a common man or putting it into the common. And expecting anything but a common interpretation. Well what that is is that's mis misleading somebody that is fraud you're deliberately using a different meaning using the same symbols as that's used in the common um, you're using those same symbols that are used by the common man that fits within the common jurisdiction and you're changing the meaning behind them in your own mind which you're quite entitled to do and you're quite entitled to author that thing but what must come with that document must come a set of definitions where were where symbols have been changed to your own idea behind the symbol it must there must be a an equal um there must be an equal display of um you know just meeting in meet the meeting of the minds you know meeting somebody in the middle if you're going to change the meaning of something that's in the common, that's already exists in the common, that can only be interpreted by the real man, the real common man will only interpret in descriptive language, what every other common man uses locally. You can't put something in there uh, without definitions if it's been changed, or without some kind of translation, you can't put that stuff in there without being fraud fraudulent that's it's just simple fact it's just when it boils down to it so we've got to get away from this un, this idea that somehow the legal system has the right to even define any symbols in the in the material world the legal system has no jurisdiction to even define language in the real world how about that how about you go into court and you say that to a judge? Say, excuse me, Mr. R uh, well, just say whatever his name is, you know. How is it that a fictional entity, such as yours that you are working for, has the right, has any right, to define any physical language that may be written physically, maybe... Um, spoken physically in terms of a vibration how does a fictional entity have any claim or right to define a language in this realm it doesn't it can only it can only define it in the fictional realm they know this they know that's a huge i'm telling you it's a huge um error in the way the legal system works but what happens is Man, gloss, man glosses over it. Now, here's the excuse they'll use. They'll say, well, if we look at an old dictionary, this is clearly what person meant. We've only taken what it meant at this time. Well, the problem is, at that, you know, if we look years ago at what person meant, that's fine. It meant something back then. But we don't live in the past. We live in the present. That's the only time that exists is the present, the here and now. If you live in the present, what definition must you apply to 
any language that you're using in the present. You must apply the here and now present definition for that thing. You can't apply a, a meaning that was two or three hundred years old. You can't apply that to the modern day. Here's your example. Um, I got a guy, right? I can time travel, right? I, I, I don't even, I can go into the past, right? <laughs> so I go back into the 1920s and I speak to a guy and I say, oh, well, you know, my old mate, um, John, um, you know, John's gay. And he, and the, the guy back in the 20s simply says to me, oh, well, that's nice that he's happy. I'm happy for John being happy. You know, I speak to a guy in the present. I, I speak to a mate in the present and I say, oh, John's gay. Oh, I didn't know he was a homosexual. <laughs> you know, that's your example there. Meaning behind words change, changes. That, you know... <laughs> Language is not a static thing. So as meanings change, um, okay, we update definitions. But you see what the legal system wants to do is they want to claim that that thing meant something back in days gone by. And they want to still use that definition today. When the local common man, the old um, hillbilly like myself, you know, the commoner, we don't use that language, you know, and unfortunately for you, fictional people, you don't get the right to say what, how language is defined in the real world, and okay, there might be some toffs out there that say, oh, well, you know, well, I still know what a person is, blah, 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 it's irrelevant, because even if Here's the, here's the thing. You would have to go down the street and you'd have to have at least 50% of the people say that it is only, a person is only a, a persona, a, a, a fictional mask, a fictional identity. You'd have to have at least 50% of those people saying that, doubt you if you walk down the road and talk to people. And you would, you know... And then you'd have the other half saying, okay, a person is a man, woman, a child. Well, again, unless the bulk of people believe that a person is, um, and I mean, I don't know where you draw the line at the bulk of people, because I don't believe in the 51% thing either. But, um, I mean, you have to have an overwhelming majority of people to say, a person is this. Before you can not put any definitions in there. See, if I was dealing with a, see if I was dealing with a, somebody that sp spoke Spanish, or you know Mexican or whatever, I'd have to try and meet that guy in the middle, wouldn't I? No, you could argue the fact that well, if he's coming to me and he wants to deal with me, then then he's got to do the work there. Um, you know, you start getting into a grey area. But what I'm trying to get across in this video is um, to have a an understanding on anything in with it, with the legal system. You have to have a meeting of the minds to have an understanding with anybody. To have a, a fair exchange with anybody, there has to be a meeting of the minds. If I put a language out that's fictional into the common, where only the common man's rules of interpretation exist, I'm doing one of two things. I'm either naive or I'm either trying to defraud somebody. That's the only way you can look at it. You know, either I don't know any better or I'm trying to defraud somebody. I guarantee it, the people that run the world, they know. <laughs> They, they damn well know that um, what they're doing is fraudulent. But the, re the reason why they get away with it is because nobody wants to put their name to anything. The only people that put their name to it is the, the stupid local guy that works for the legal system that doesn't know any better again.
So he goes ahead and he's, oh, I'm happy to be the the author of this document, you know, or the rep or some kind of signature on it to author it. He doesn't know any better. He doesn't know that by accepting what's on that piece of paper, he's inadvertently accepting the responsibility of breaking natural law. When you get to talking to the, this is why like, I watched a guy, um, Curtis Stone, right? He's a market gardener, and he's talking about he's up in Canada, and he's talking about the way they put acts through Parliament up there, or whatever they have, um, whatever kind of organisation, the way that works up in in um, Canada. But what, have, what has to happen is they have to have royal assent on most of these bills that get passed. Well, they don't put it on there. The Queen doesn't sign most of the bills that get passed. Why? Because she doesn't have nothing to do with it. She doesn't, have, she doesn't want to deal with breaking natural law. This is why she probably has three or four different signatures. Because most of the signatures she's putting on stuff is all fictional stuff. But she will. She if she can avoid signing anything, she will. You know, this is why the people up high in power don't want to put their names to anything. I mean, even in a fiction, this is the problem. Once you start signing stuff, um, and this, this is well, this is again, this is the problem. None of it means anything anyway, because they all want to, you know, act like it's fictional language and it means something different well it doesn't not in the common world not in the common real world it means what it means so they're in a whole heap of i mean they really are in a heap of steaming doo-doo when it comes to the way they use language and how that works i think with natural law that's just my take on how language should work with natural law there's only one man, there's only man that can interpret language in this dominion. So, whatever the common language is, whatever the common descriptive language is at the time, in the present moment, whenever that thing, whenever that document was written, in that present moment, that's the only thing that applies to that, unless there is. A translation with it another set of de um, definitions you cannot a fiction so this is the other problem a fiction doesn't have any authority to uh, prescribe meaning in the in the real world it doesn't you can write as many bloody dictionaries as you like but the common man gets to decide so again, like the Oxford Dictionary or the Black Laws Dictionary, I mean, that's just prescribed stuff. That's somebody else has authored those things. Okay, they may contain, they may contain a lot of true meanings for the present time, but they're not definitive. The only thing that has definitive say is the common man on what something means. So this is the problem. You can't, you can't have a proper... You definitely can't have it. Well, this is why you can't have a deal with a fiction. A man can't deal with a fiction. A man has to deal through another fiction, his own fiction, to deal with a fiction. Uh, I hope this is not getting too complicated. I probably should finish the video there. I mean, it's 24 minutes. That's what I want to get across. Because there's so many people out there that are still willing to believe that the language created by the fictional system, the legal system, has some kind of authority in the real world. It doesn't have any authority. Even if the judge sat behind that, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> sat behind his desk, on his little podium, whatever, that, that meaning that he is trying to bring into the real world, he can't do it. Number one, he's acting as a fiction. He's trying to bring fictional language into the real world he can't do it but nobody tells them this <laughs> at the time so they just carry on doing it uh i don't know i gotta leave it at that because i'm just going around in circles now
Um, I hope you enjoyed, and that I'm, we're going to do a follow-up video here in probably about a week or two about property taxes and the way language comes to you, especially with other documents. You know, you might have to sign something about, you know, <laughs> none of it really means anything. So, I mean, we get into the whole situation of like, is it all right to just sign a fictional document with no, um, with with no sort of real with no sort of problems um i don't know if you look at it the way i'm looking at it now um with language jurisdiction when somebody sends you something and that you know the <laughs> i mean it's all complete nonsense just, i mean just the way you know when you get a document through the post and it asks you to sign this and then send it back to them and all this nonsense it's it, it's complete utter nonsense when it comes down to the language, when it comes down to even the way that the, the thing, not to mention, right, the way the thing's written and the, and the way the thing's um, enacted in terms of somebody signing it somewhere else that you don't witness, somebody here signing it <laughs> that's not witnessed, nothing's witnessed, nothing's real. Um, the only way they can get you on something is if you just play along when they ask you questions and it, they say, well, uh, you know, did you sign this on this date, blah, 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 and this, this, but, and you have to play along with them for them to win any kind of battle with you, um, you know, when they've sent you a document to sign. What do you do? Just deny it, I suppose. No, nothing to do with me. I don't know how you got that. Did you witness it? Why didn't you have it witnessed when it was signed? <laughs> what do they say? I don't know. You know, I mean, it's all poppycock. The way the whole thing works. Not to mention you, as a man. Number one, you can't make a. You can't really make a proper. Um, you can't make a contract with a fiction. Fictions can make co contracts with fictions, but the only way that that works is in the le within the legal system. You have to be guaranteed. Your account has to be guaranteed. That's that great big load of money, that bond that they put on the name, that huge load of money there that they stash away, that guarantee account for all your deal or for all your person's dealings. That's the only way any kind of merchant system works. When you go in to be a member, you have to have some kind of financial backing. So if you don't carry out and they know this because a man is not bound by any of that stuff. Yeah, you have your honour, but circumstances change. And they, knew, they know this. This is why the whole system was created. Anyway, I'm digressing and it doesn't need to be this long. But you get the idea. You know, a man can't even make a contract. Um, you know, I don't know what I'd do if I went into court now, to tell you the truth. There's so many things to say. <laughs> I don't, you know... I don't even know where I'd begin, you know. I'd just be like, look, it's your person. Just take it out of the damn guarantee account. Why am I have got to be here? Because you've sent some cro some guys after me um, and bought me that, you know. Otherwise, I'm going to get arrested by your your nutters in uniform, you know. Um, I don't even know how I'd even deal with going into court today. In truth. I mean, there's just so many avenues to to you know to explore i mean you could just be stood there for probably a couple of hours going on at them you know this ain't right this ain't right this ain't right you're violating natural law here you know and you just go through the whole bloody list and i don't know i i would expect they would just be like get him out of here i don't want to deal with this guy but um you know who knows anyway too much waffle i will try and get that property tax video done um here in the next couple of weeks i hope i've got another video coming up a crazy one more stuff on the hoover dam you're gonna love it all right bye